Well hi everyone, welcome to my Christmas special edition video. This week's video was recorded at a local art group that I demonstrated. Well I'm heading off into the little small village of Rittle on the outskirts of um, Chelmsford City um, for my last for my last workshop of 2023. It's a lovely little village just coming into um, into the village now um, it's got a lovely green and a pond um, and um, Luckily, the course is in a large room um, on the first floor of a local pub. So that should be very interesting, and we're there now. So um, let's go set up, get ready for the group. Well, the group are just putting everything together, getting all their materials out. Uh, we've got the festive tree in the corner, and uh, the group are settling very nicely. Well, I'm here at a lovely art group in, in Ritton on the outskirts of Chelmsford today, and we're looking at painting a sow scene. So that should be very interesting. Um, the group are almost there, so yeah, we'll get started. Well, hi everyone, and uh, welcome to my morning. Well basically morning workshop here in Rittle. Um, thank you all very much for attending and thank you all for asking me basically. Um, we're looking at a snow scene. Um, now a lot of people think snow scenes are cold, um, that, that they're not interesting, you know, they're, they're direct. You think of greys and, and blues, but of course within a snow scene, if you want to make it appealing <coughs> to the viewer, then you must try and add colour where you can, okay? And the drawing that we have, I think you should all have this drawing onto your watercolour paper. Um, simple little cottage, um, set in with a track leading your eyes into uh, the more just off-centre area. Um, and as you can see from the tonal version, it's actually... Um, <coughs> quite um well it's tonal really you know that is the key to any painting is to look at the tone values before you start so you've got invariably with um when you have snow um anything that is not white normally looks darker because it's contrasted against the white snow so for instance if you have um white uh, snow hanging around on roofs. Skies in the background normally look darker, even if they're blue. Whereas if it were to be a pale red um, mm. tile roof, then the sky would probably look lighter. And it would it'd actually be the same sky, really. Um, <coughs> and also, another, another thing is river banks. If you get a river with greenery, the river looks light. But if you get snowy banks, the river looks dark. So it's all contrast. So the first thing you need to think about, particularly with a snow scene, is the contrast of everything. Lights against darks, um, snow on top of the wall there, um, which contrasts nicely against what will be a warm brick wall. So we've got warm uh, chimney and patches even if the roof is completely covered, if you look at a scene and the roof is completely covered with snow, uh, just use a bit of license and leave one or two gaps where you can put lovely red tile roofing. Um, front of the building is going to be warm. The only thing cool on the building apart from the snow will be the door because I want that to contrast against the warmth of the wall. So even there again, I mean, if that was a commission for someone, then if that door was bright red, then unfortunately you'd have to paint it bright red. But if you're just painting uh, a scene um, 
as an impression, then you can make that any colour you like. And I'm going to make it blue today, purely to contrast against the warmth of the building. Um, also, if you notice, it's not dead flat where the snow sits on the ground. I've used a little bit of waviness, a little bit of movement to show a little bit of drifting. Now, if you're not drawing that in that way, it doesn't matter, you can do that when you paint the, the wall itself. And notice how, to show the depth of the snow, I've come down into the track where a car or whatever. So, and then when we paint this, we turn the edges to make it look as <coughs> if the track is lower than the bank of snow either side. So it's all about, uh, of course, uh, also shadows. Look, there's a shadow there. Um, there's a shadow there. Um, probably a tree out of picture, could be a building, but we don't care. Even if it wasn't a building or anything there, I'd still put a foreground shadow in uh, because that pulls the foreground forward and lights up the snow before you get to the building. And if you notice, I've turned down with the shadow. And then it goes up the, the hump in the centre, uh, back down, and then up again the other side. So you'll also find that shadows actually show the, contra the, the contour of the land that the shadow is cast on. Okay? So if it were to be dead flat, if you were to just put, wipe a shadow across, then it would look as if that was dead flat. But of course, you've got contours within that that show the undulating um, snow in the foreground. So that's basically it really. Then of course we look at colour. And uh, I've hit that one up, I don't know why. But, now this is not the scene that you're going to paint, although I have got that. I just thought I'd use another scene to highlight um, what I'm talking about really. Um, dark sky, uh, red tar red uh, roofing. This is the back of Willie Locke's house in Flatford Mill. So the front, we're actually looking towards the mill here, and you've got the mill pond there. Um, and um, not very often people paint the back view, but I used to teach there many times. Uh, I was a tutor there, FSC tutor, for many years at Flatford Mill. Um, so I was always looking for new um, angles. And, and I just thought the reverse view was good. But if you notice, the building, see how I really give the cream colour, the warmth within the snow, the warmth in the track where presumably um, uh, the walkers or whatever have worn away the snow. So it's all about lights, darks, warmth and cool colours. <coughs> also, the trees. Now, a lot of people would elect to use masking fluid for the trees. But personally, I prefer to pick around with the brush because you get, I don't know, it, it looks a bit, it can get a bit uniform. If you start putting on masking fluid and dotting around, it can look a bit fussy. Um, but I like the more looser look. So what you do, you paint the sky in and, and when you get to the snow areas, you just leave gaps where the tree will be, okay? So the blue behind the actual branches is just where I've left gaps. Also left the trunk, where I've painted afterwards and left some white. So there's no masking fluid used, okay? Um, you can do, lots of artists do use masking fluid, um, but I prefer not to. I feel it, I get a looser feel uh, from the painting. Okay, now, not a bad idea if you um, watch the initial um, stage to start with um, and then um, you can uh, paint along afterwards really because I'd like to get the sky in first to show you how I treat the trees and how I paint the um, sky itself. Anything you want to have snow you've got to leave white paper. Okay? I would suggest you use a large brush, and I mean quite large, I would use this on most size uh, work, but maybe a little large for some of you, um, but as large a brush as you feel 
well, comfortable, perhaps you don't even feel comfortable with it, but use a large brush. Um, and I like the brushes that point. So they point up nicely so you can pick around areas. And this is a, uh, it's a Pro Art um, Series 45 mop brush. It's, it's, a, it's a natural and synthetic mix of hair. Not particularly expensive as far as large brushes go. I wouldn't want to buy a sable that size, that's for certain. Um, okay, now what I would suggest is the first thing you do, you damp your paper for the sky, okay? But don't damp in to the tree areas because we're going to leave that white paper. Now, it's not that warm in here, which is a benefit when you're painting this sort of scene. Notice how I'm just picking around the top of that at the moment. And then I'm heading off down to the lower area. And then, of course, on the hedge, we're going to have snow as well. So I've just lightly damped that. Now, what colours? Well, I'm going to use Prussian Blue, a nice strong mix of Prussian Blue. You can use Ultramarine if you wish. Um, you know, it's just that, I don't know, Prussian Blue gives me such, such a deep, um, it's quite cool blue, but I'm going to warm it up with, if you've got Indian Red or Light Red, that's what I would suggest. I'm going to use Indian Red. There we go. And that just takes off that real harsh. Um, and so let's see how dark this is onto damp paper. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh now that is dark. Good Lord. Look at that. Now I'm picking around. And the reason why I damp the paper is because I want that to um, to remain um, damp as we go. So I want a fairly clean wash of colour. Okay. So, and then shape the tree with the odd patch. And paint right the way down. That's it. Of overhanging branches like that. Maybe a bit denser there, perhaps and just dot around till you come into the lower area and paint around the trunk. Now, if you can manage to paint around some of the trunk, then that will be an advantage, but it's not vital. Good. Dive in, keep reloading the brush. Now I'm gonna paint around the chimney. You can leave a bit of white. Down and around the roof line. There we go. And I'm just flipping across so as we keep continuity of colour. And round the chimney area, oh, that's a bit of a narrow chimney. Never mind. That'll be shadow side, so that's fine. And then we paint down into the roof line and then up so you can see the depth of the snow on top of the roof. There we go. And then you paint through and you leave gaps where that tree is. Just make certain if you can, or, and, and that's got to be quite done, that's it. There we are. And then just shape up that tree again. And we've now formed the top of a tree there, and the top of a tree there. Now, you notice I'm painting quite fast, which, um, you know, that's something that... Uh, it would pay you to do if you can, but um, try not to get too many lines within the colour. Colin, okay. put the red in the blue as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it yeah. all together. Yep. Yeah. And then I'm using more red just for this lower area, just to give it a bit of warmth there. See that? Just stroking that in. Allow that to run through on its own, and that will then across there then use an uneven feel to the lower part of the sky like that and I know it looks a little bit strange at the moment then I'm going to put in 
some impressions of trees that are in shadow in the background. And it's just going to be one there. There we go. And once you get to that stage, oh, I'm just going to dot in, a, in and out with the point of the brush so around the top of the hedge there. Because that, I hope, will give us an indication that, that the hedge is not full of leaf, it's actually open. There we are. And that sets the scene for the sky. I'm not an experienced watercolourist, but I've been around a lot of watercolours. Yes. I, I, and I use, tend to use acrylic, so we go from dark to light. I've always got somebody around with um, It watercolor. is, yeah. The only thing is that yeah. I wanted the, the sky to be probably the darkest, or one of the darkest okay. things in the painting, right? And that highlights the snow itself. Oh, okay. So, okay. I mean, um, yeah. we're not using white. Yeah. We're leaving the white opaque. So okay. obviously, you know, anything that's going to be white, you have to pick around. Anything that's going to be dark, you can overpaint a couple of times. Uh, and it's not a bad idea if you can just catch that snow along the top edge there. There we go. And that's, that bit of warmth in the distance gives you that feeling of depth. <coughs> Don't be afraid to use strong colour. If you notice, it looked very, very dark, if you notice, when we first started to paint. Um, but as it dries, it always dries a tone or two long. Okay, so we're going to try and warm the snow up. So don't worry about any parts that are not snow. Uh, I've completely cleaned the brush. Okay, now I used a little bit of um, uh, red in the sky. I used Indian red. So let's try that again. There we go. A little bit of Indian red. Whatever red you use with the sky, you put a little bit of red and I'm putting a bit of raw sienna with that. You could use yellow ochre, and that should give you a slightly orangey red. Now, this has to be extremely um, light, so plenty of uh, water on the brush. Okay, now, a little bit in the snow on the roof, and I'm not painting completely, notice I'm just dabbing around, painting the, the angle that the roof lays at, a little bit on that gable, um, a little bit in this background, there. I'm doing all the background stuff at the moment, and the way the hedge stands upright, but I'm not painting everything. I think you can probably see that at the back. It's giving warmth to that white area. Now, don't go too dark with this because it's only a, a tint of reflection. Good. Then, as you come forward, add more water, but this time a little bit of red, of that red. So you're using a yellow and a red to create an orangey glow. So there's a bit more red in this, and I'm immediately showing the turn of the snow in the foreground. So I've used more red for the foreground, and I'm turning down like that, but it's not going everywhere, just here and there. And that starts, starts to tell you that the snow is uneven. Immediately, the snow looks as if it's laying laying there in an uneven fashion and it's picking up the contour of the um, of the of the land really where the snow is on so I've used a little bit more yellow in the background only very light and it will dry out lighter a little bit more red in the foreground purely to pull the foreground forward and that sets the background back so a good tip, I'm not going to bother with the trees, I don't think. Uh, I think we'll leave those white um, at this stage. Um, bearing in mind, yours may still be slightly damp. 
and use plenty of water. If it's coming a little dark, just wet your brush and spread it so that it's not too dark when it dries. And don't paint all of the snow. I've only dabbed around here and there just to give them, and you can blend it. They don't have to be hard edge, they can be soft edge, but it really is just the tinting to paint. Purely to give the, um, the snow scene a bit of warmth. And I do this on virtually every snow scene that I paint. For the chimney area, I'm going to use um, I'm actually going to up my red now because the, uh, the Indian red is quite a dull red which I wanted for the sky. Now I'm going to up my red with light red. You could use alizarin crimson with a little bit of yellow to create an orange but if you've got light red so much the better because I use that quite a lot. It's a red that's not particularly, it's not like the crimson uh, it's, it's a terracotta, really, you know, um, and actually, on its own, creates a lovely red colour. So, I'm going to paint the chimney there, across there, pulling that down, and immediately you get that lovely sort of, doesn't matter if you leave a few gaps, because we could have snow there. Okay, now I'm going to add a little of the raw sienna with that to create the tiled roofing, which will be a little lighter. So that's the tiles of the roof there, and we can see then the warmth of those areas of tile work that have no longer got snow on them. And they, you know, all different angles. And immediately, once you put that on, you begin to see the warmth in the roof. You know, just pure white, to me, doesn't look that good, you know. And then I am using alizarin crimson with a little of the raw sienna because I want the, the main chimney at the top to be very red. Sun coming from the left, so I'm leaving the right hand, the, the left hand side white paper to reflect a bit of sunlight hitting the left hand side of the chimney. So I've just left a bead of um, white paper. So there you go. Use light red or a red with yellow if um, that's what you're using um, and you get variety of reds and oranges um, which um, but of course the tone is very important too. Um, make certain that you use the right tone not too dark you know nowhere near as dark as the sky notice those Areas are quite light um, <coughs> because they've got sunlight on them. And that same colour with that olive and crimson in, I'm going to use for the wall because I want that to be nice and rich and warm. Plenty of raw sienna in there again. So it's olive and crimson now. As I move forward, I'm adding more crimson. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint across the wall. And I'm going to leave one or two little patches of white and nice and smooth where the wall meets the snow. The snow. And of course it's uneven <coughs> where it, the snow hangs on the roof, on the top of the wall. And there again I'm leaving some little gaps here and there. Because that, I hope, will indicate the feeling of snow laying on some of the jointing in the wall. And the more you look at snow scenes, the more you will spot these areas. And if you notice, by using a large brush, you can keep painting for ages. 
rather than keep remixing because that brush holds a lot of water and it points up well and that to me creates more freedom because you're not keep you're not you're not keep at, you're not keep adding these um, um, colours again. So we've got the chimney, the roof areas, and the walls, which are probably the warmest part of the sea. Sorry, I lost track there. The wall at the front. What colours did you use? On that? Um, I used the same as the chimney. I used uh, raw sienna and um, a little um, alizarin um, uh, crimson, the, the pinky colour. Yeah. yeah. But mainly, it's got to look like brick wall, really. Um, so for the wall is burnt umber with a touch of raw sienna. And that is the start of a colour, although I'd be very much darker, if I was going to do thatching. They, I love burnt umber, raw sienna, touch of blue for thatch roof work. But there we go. There we are. There's that render. I'm painting around the windows. We're going to have white frames on the windows. There. And paint all around where the icicles or the snow is hanging. We've got a surround around the door. Like that. And all under the gutter there. But if you notice, the snow is actually hanging where it slipped in a lot of places, not everywhere, but there we are. And a little more raw sienna is added as I've come down, just to give it a bit more sort of yellowy feel. Round the window, round the sill, because on top of the sill will be um, snow. So, oh, there's a shrub there that may have snow on. There you go. And immediately, we're getting, oh, and when you come into this bush here, dot around again. There's a shrub that needs some dots and that bush there. There we are. Doesn't that look Christmassy? <laughs> So when you're looking for the, to paint cottages in a, in a snowstorm, um, render is not a bad sort of um, um, cottage to paint, you know. Um, even if it was white, I would still give it a little bit of colour, purely to give it warmth. But in this case, it's um, it's a render of some... some uh, uh, description um, and I think it fits. Well I thought I'd show you around the lovely village of Rittle here in Essex. A lovely green but around by the green you've got uh, some lovely um, lovely architecture um, the green is exceptionally nice particularly if you've got uh, sunlight and snow. Let me just take you around the green. Got lovely uh, surrounding roads with all the lovely architecture. And of course, at the end, we have the lovely old church, which is always a delight to paint. Um, not really uh, worried, whatever the weather. It's a very measly day here. When the sun is shining, we've got lovely, um, lovely tones within the buildings. Lovely pink cottage. Then, of course, the old beamed cottage. There, that's. Um, Always a joy to paint.
Then of course we had the lovely duck pond which um, really creates its own um, views in itself. I love Rittal, even on a day like today. Autumn at its best on Rittal Green, here in Essex. Is to, I'm going to select a, a brown and we could use burnt amber for this but I'm going to use burnt sienna because it's a nice warm brown okay and I'm, I'm still use this large brush you can go to a smaller brush if you wish I'm going to use burnt sienna with to make it darker I'm going to put um, a bit of the ultramarine with that so burnt sienna and ultramarine okay and that should give you a dark brown but a warm brown rather warmer than um, than if we was using um burnt umber that's what i feel anyway and i'm going to paint the two gate posts one there leave a patch on the top because that's where we're going to have <coughs> snow, like that. And remember there's snow in places. You could leave some, actually, on the uh, gate. What I'm going to do, I'm putting the gate sections in. And then when I paint the background, I'm going to leave the top of the post unpainted. Yes. Now it, this really should be a five bar gate, but unfortunately it's only got four. <laughs> so I don't know what's happened there. Underneath the snow. And the, that's it, yes, it's covered in snow. <laughs> Just gives me more gaps to fill in when I paint the background, really. So, um, yeah. yeah. That's Thank you. So that's the gate, and with a drier brush, I'm removing a lot of the moisture from the brush now. And I'm going to use burnt sienna again. And I'm going to just sweep that, pushing hard and then lifting off, pushing hard and then lifting off, to create the tracks in the foreground. A little bit wider in the foreground as it comes towards us more narrow as it goes away and round the corner in the distance. So Colin, did you say dry brush? Yeah, it's, it's only just damp. Right, okay. right. Just so as, I mean, it's better than, I like a broken edge. You probably can't see it uh, at the back, but it's, it's the, the, the unevenness of the paper has created a broken line. Okay. <laughs> what are we going to do for windows? Let's, I'll tell you what, to start with, I'm going to give them a bit of light. I'm using whatever yellow you've got, nice, nice sort of um, cadmium yellow or something like that, and just stroke that down like that to start with. There we are. So we've got a bit of glow. You've got to watch, well, my main problem with windows when you try and create light in a window, um, mine normally end up looking as if the place is a light inside. <laughs> you know, the fire engine is required, you know? So we're going to be very careful when we try and light the windows up. Um, but I've just put a bit of yellow, I'll allow that to dry. Is that you mean the window panes? Yes, the, just the panes of glass. In actual fact, I've just wiped over um, just four brush strokes, down, 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 down. But there again, a brush that's not too damp, so it leaves a broken, uneven edge. Um, and um, it really does sort of, you know, we're going to have white frames. Well, once we get the dark actual window glazing in, that will actually show the frame itself. So it's really a backdrop, you know, for, for 
if we leave any light areas of reflection. Okay, now I have gone to a smaller mock now, which is the um, uh, a slightly smaller mock. This is synthetic, but it still points. It's not particularly big. Um, so, you know, I just feel that I will use something a little smaller for this. Now, I'm going to use burnt sienna and cobalt blue again for what would be the parts of the tree that haven't got snow on them, right? So, and there again, I've, it's only just damp and it's got colour on there so that when I drag the brush across the paper, it will give me a broken feel like that. So that will indicate I'm going over some of the snow area, uh, the, the sky area as well, not covering all of the area. And that gives me that sort of sense that we have small twig, twiggy branches within that. So there again, that, that, that warms it up again. So go over some of the snow areas, but not all of them. There we are. And that was burnt umber, sorry. Uh, that was burnt sienna and cobalt blue. You could use burnt umber. It's not dissimilar to a burnt umber color. So that's just, I want that looseness. It will all come together when we put shadows in, but um, it's just nice to show you how I would produce um, a loose feel um, to, to these trees, really. Now, I'm going to use burnt umber now because I want something darker, and I'm going to use ultramarine. So it's burnt umber and ultramarine, only just a dry brush technique, so only just brush that's not got too much moisture on it. And I'm going to now hold the brush on the side and pull down, because I want to show parts of this, not too much at the top, but as we come down, so most of the snow <coughs> on this hedge will actually be on the top. So when we come down to the lower area, it finishes on top of the snow, on the wall. There we are. So we've got plenty of white at the top, a snowy sensation or feel to the um, lower area. There we are. And then I'm going to paint around the gate, trying, if I can, to leave some snow on top of the gate cross sections and post. So I need to be fairly dark for that. So it's burnt umber and ultramarine? Yes, burnt umber, ultramarine, picking around, leaving plenty of white on top of the cross sections. And if you can get somewhere near that sort of effect, then on top of the gate as well. And of course, down that front edge, I'm going to leave white as well. Quite dark around that area, like that. And that shows up the gate. Uh, but of course, as you go up to the top, you leave some patches unpainted where the snow is actually laid. It's going to be nice and dark along the top of that wall there. There you go. That's nice. And then a little, just gradually, as the brush runs out of paint, just continue that to the side of that building. Yeah. And that gives an impression of a hedge. 
because I think one of the hardest things to paint in winter is a hedge that got snow on the top but it's nothing but a um, dark brown really around the top of the um, uh, of the underneath where we've got the um, sun catching the snow but underneath we've got that um, dark effect obviously shadow will make a big difference to the whole thing so there you go that's the start of the trees and the hedge also the tree will have a trunk so I'm putting that in there like that and if you're lucky enough to have left any of uh, the area unpainted can make it look as if we've got snow on it and you can pull one or two branches up through there just indicate some branches with the point of the brush but nothing too heavy and I'm just going to be a little darker now with the branches of the tree at the background a branch coming up there like that I'll try and be dark enough I've got to be a little darker with that because we need to show enough dark areas to show up the light areas it's all about tone these these um, trees well, any any of the these paintings and you could always bring some leafing out to the outside yeah just got to be a little darker with this one so I'm going dark there dark there that's the trunk and then the branch comes up there and just pull off one or two supporting branches to the undersides of some of the there we are it's you know maybe a little difficult for you to see but if you do want to just come up you can obviously just to get an idea of um, what's happening here the, the feeling of the impression really of branches coming out and supporting and some of the branches could just stand out without actually having any so and I've left a little bit of snow suggestion of snow there oh and it looks as if that could have another area there another branch there there we go so it's all about leaving patches of snow on the trunk if that's possible with um, some branches coming off of the trunk but as you get up into the deeper more denser leafing just leave the snow to do to to give that impression okay let's look at this Tr this shrub that's coming in there now this is going to be an evergreen right? so you're going to have it's going to be green but you still need some snow left right so use the large mop or whatever you could use a flat now I'm going to use the Prussian blue right and now this is interesting Prussian blue and if you use burnt sienna you get a dull green because that prussian blue is a green blue and you get a very dark green it's it's i use that mix for, for, for ivies if you've not got the prussian or windsor blue twilo blue intense blue no? No? In, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that would be the best of one. That's the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. If not, and you want to use ultramarine or one of the other blues, you will need to put a yellow and a brown. 
because otherwise it'll come up brown. And all you do, you thoroughly load the brush with plenty of paint and then you could use a flat for this if you wanted and then you drag the brush across the paper leaving white dot and dab because the top of the paint, the, the tree has or the shrub has snow on it as you go down to the lower area one or two little touches of snow there so you leave gaps if you've left any gaps of snow and then as you come down it needs to be a little darker you can add more brown Plus. Plus the brown, burnt uh -huh. sienna. Burnt sienna. Yep. If you've got the Prussian, that's what you need. And then, of course, in the lower area, that just hangs more or less like that. So, all of a sudden, you've created a shrub that actually has snow on it. And that, I think, helps to balance the, um, the other trees on that left hand side. And while we've got that going, we may as well have a similar sort of thing for um, a, an impression of a fir tree, Christmas tree, there we go, standing next to the door. And no, I'm not going to put any lights on it, not, not, not today. <laughs> And finish there again on top of the snow in the lower area. That's it. And then I'm just going to use burnt sienna for warmth for a shrub standing there. And really it's just to add interest to the whole picture. And all will be revealed when we put shadows on. Oh. <laughs> that's where it really gets exciting it's like icing sugar isn't it it is it's like it's like icing a Christmas cake <laughs> Marks and Spencers do them for not, for for you Right, now we're into the shadows. Now, I'm actually, I mean, I could use this large brush, but I'm going to use a well-loaded, um, my medium size um, mop that points. Now, I've already decided that the sun is going to come from the left-hand side. Although the sky is very dark, it's still sunny, although the sun is very low. So you have long shadows in the winter, small shadows in the summer, short shadows in the summer, and now the colours of your shadows. Well that's interesting because I haven't got a spare clean part on the palette at the moment, <laughs> so I think we will just clean one area, although shadows are not really vital to get the, the colour dead right. Do you know what I'm going to use? Um, the reason I'm asking, you haven't made up my mind yet. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for ideas. You know? <laughs> um, now, I'm going to use Windsor Blue. Ooh. Ooh, bit of a groan. Windsor Blue. And I'm going to use Alizarin Crimson. Now, that's, that's purple, isn't it? Purpley Blue. That's what I'm looking for. Fairly dark, but not too dark, okay? So it's a purpley blue, and when you mix your shadow color, always put it in somewhere where it's not gonna really be too prominent, just in case you haven't got the mix right, um, because that can be a major problem. Right, so the first place I'm gonna put this blue, gotta remember, this building will cast a shadow over 
that hedge area. That hedge area. There you go. And that will go across the snow there and spread out like that. There you go. Now you take a bit of moisture off the brush and you break up that shadow and you paint it over the snow as well. And all of a sudden you get a sense that that shadow runs across that part of that hedging. And that is the first area of snow shadow that I'm going to put in. And I'm painting, I'm enhancing the area behind the fence too, or the gate, because I think it needs to be a little darker. There we go. Not too much of it, but there we are. So that immediately brings that into shadow. Now, now I'm pretty much happy with the colour. I'm going to add a little more red to this one because this shadow is a little closer. Now, the overhang of the... Let's just try and be a little darker than that. There you are. The overhang of the roof line there would have a shadow. And the deeper the overhang, the more acute angle you would see on the... Like that. Okay, so that's that. Now just well-loaded brush. Let's go a little stronger than that. Let's just really go a little darker. Right, now we've got a shadow under the overhang of the roof line. There like that. And that stands along there like that and it actually comes down where that bit of snow is finishing and then that runs across at that angle it then runs across at that angle and there like that and of course it actually hangs down where that go around there like that around there like that and that hangs down as well go just to show that snow hanging Make sure that's fairly straight along that bottom edge there. There we are. And then that runs like that up into sort of like the gutter area, I suppose. That bit's already slopes bring it off, and there's an area there like that. And immediately that roof comes forward and the snow stands forward where you've got the overhang of the roof line. You would have it across there, your thickness of the snow, and a bit of shadow there, thickness of the snow, shadow there, or there'd be a bit of shadow, a uh, bit there, just a little bit on the base, and then a little bit there. And all of a sudden, you've got the thickness of the snow showing there. You would have shadow running up from the chimney, under the overhang and down the right hand side whoop there over me snow there you go down the right hand side bit of a lip there on that chimney there we go so we've got shadow i'm even going to darken this one more time because i wanted that to be a little darker there we go um in actual fact i'm going to point that because i just feel it then it's flipped from the point there, that's it. Then the windows, of course. Knowing where to put them, we're going to have recessed windows. So it's across the top, down the right hand side, and under the sill. Across the top, down the right, the left hand side, sorry, and under the sill, and to the right of the sill. Forgot about that. And then, of course, there's the door is set in a recess. Like that. Quite deep recess that door's in. Purely because I painted it rather wide. So all of a sudden 
the building stands out in clear sunlight. There you go, look at that. And where else are we going to put this lovely shadow? Well, we're going to put it on the underside of that snow area, on the uh, wall, and down the edge there, the underside of that area of snow there. And all of a sudden, that snow on the wall stands away from the wall. Really, shadows are the key to most landscape. Well, any painting, really, you know. It's the tone values. The lights against the darks. There we go. And then we have a bit of a shadow on the gate. The underside of the gate cross sections. There we are. Oh, and a bit on the wall from the gate post and the snow, come to that matter. A bit where the grasses are. Okay, so that's that. I'll let you um, carry on with that. Notice how I get excited when I see an area <laughs> of uh, shadow. Right, here we go. Look at this. Um, those two shrubs stand um, almost into the wall. So we put shadow there and shadow there, and all of a sudden they stand away from the wall. So is that shadow on the wall? That's shadow on the wall, Thanks. exactly, yeah. So that's the casting shadow on the wall itself. And all of a sudden, they stand away. Now, to start with, it will blend in to look like the shrub. But once it dries, don't play with it, just put it on, allow it to dry up, dry up lighter than the shrub, so it should sit back. The mine is still wet, so it looks a little on the dark side. Right, now I've got some of this paint fully loaded on the brush. I'm going to put some touches of shadow within that tree. Now this is where you begin to show a sense of shading within that tree. Be a little bit lighter than that, I think. Could be a little heavy. There we go, that's better. And we've got a little bit of shading there. Let's just soften that just a touch. There we go. One or two little touches just where the shading and allow that to dry. Don't overdo that. Um, and if you want to shape up the outside edge, you can still do so with this shadow. I believe I said to some of you that perhaps you can use this shadow to shape up, which you can. There we go. So that's shading parts of the um, snow area on the two trees. Then we have shading for the foreground. Now, I think we can get to the foreground now, yeah. yeah. Now the foreground, it's a purpley shadow. And I'm going to start off in the lower part of this tree with this shadow. And notice where you paint on the tree that's actually dark, it will be dark. But where you paint over onto the light, you'll get a sense of shadow onto the snow areas. Very little as you go up to the top because that will be in sunlight. Like that. So a nice purpley and of course, what I'm going to do, that shadow would stretch onto the wall. 
So that casts a shadow across that wall area. Oh, that's interesting, look at that. And down to the snow. And then a broken edge on the outside. Well, and that then has to be justified with a, a lovely shadow running across the snow, which you can play with to your heart's content. There we are. <laughs> and then we're going to have another area in the foreground which is a bit more undulating. Now I'm really getting excited now. <laughs> And the snow comes across the shadow, across the, the snow, into the track, up the track the other side, and then up the bank and away. And that denotes the feeling of a, um, of a tree or something out of picture. There we are. Look at that. That wall will cast a shadow. Underneath the gate. One or two little touches where the wall meets the um, snow, <coughs> but not too many. And one or two little sort of soft areas of shadow within the snow there, one or two little patches along the track, you know, one or two little, oh, one or two little turns on the other side of the, there we go, look at that. I'm really having fun now. See, I've dotted in one or two little Patches of, of shadows here and there. Not too dark. I'm going to have another one there. Where's that from? I don't know. <laughs> do we have to have... Do we, do we really need a, an excuse for putting a shadow in? <laughs> Just holds in that left-hand side. Careful, these cover up. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and you see, this is this is the thing. If you get too um, too excited about your shadows, you can completely get rid of the snow itself. Whoa, there's another area of snow shadow. Hang on a minute. One more area. Then I've got to stop. And if I put any more in, can you tell me to stop, please? Because I'm sure I'm going to overdo it today. <clears throat> Where there is another area of soft snow, shadow, um, right, wonder where that tree would overhang on the roof. Not sure that's a good idea. If I was you, I wouldn't put this in. <laughs> <laughs> but never mind, it's too late now. And I'm going to call it a day at that, I think. I think that I'm happy with that. Oh, and, and I'm still going, look. Just one or two little touches to show up that track a little bit wider in the foreground. Good. Well, I think that's pretty much there, really. And the thing is that you don't get the beauty of a painting until you have a clean surround. I've got all them jagged edges. It's not until I take the tape away or you lay a mount on the top. And the good thing about mounting, if you've got a lot of sky that you don't need, you can mount below that. If you've got a, 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 a Nigel cauliflower in the sky, <laughs> you can always mount below that, right? Um, in actual fact, some of my worst mistakes are under my mats. You didn't want to come back, did you? Under, under the, you didn't under, want to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, um, 
Uh, it, it's advice, Nigel. Yeah, it <laughs> um, some of my worst nightmares are under the mounds around the edges. Um, but obviously there is a, a limit to how close you can come in. <laughs> you know, you end up with a picture that big, you know. Um, but let's take the surround away and let's see um, what we've got. Well, there's the finished painting. Very good. And here is the group waiting for their lunch to be delivered to them while they mull over the, um, their finished paintings. Well, there's the finished painting. I've really enjoyed my morning here at uh, the art group. Um, in Rittle, just on the outskirts of Chomsford, um, just off of the green. And the good thing is, we're actually in a pub. So let's head for the bar. <laughs> Well, there's all the work in one cluster. Yep. I'm sure you'll agree they've all come, come off particularly well. I've 